The studio walls closed in with their beige colors. Pictures of abstract textures looked alive and mocking. The small dimensions of this place pressed on her, only appearing cozy on surface. Laurie sank in her seat, feeling the cold, soft black fabric of the miniature sofa greedily caressing her pale legs that gleamed in the bright lights. She sighed and checked her phone for the fifth time in the past minute or so, anticipating. Nobody was coming for what seemed an eternity, and that camera didn't make her wait any easier, its flashing record indicator seemingly spying on her, watching her every frantic move. The door quietly creaked open and the guy walked in, with a smile iridescent. His eyes glided her blouse and short skirt, rated her lean thighs, flashing a spark of interest for a split second, then fell back to the normal expression. He sat at the table before Laurie and checked the camera, pressing some buttons. He then turned to her and cooed his greetings, introducing himself as Rufus. Laurie finally exhaled the plum that suffocated her chest all along. They spoke for a while, exchanging basic info usually done at the start of a job interview. Laurie could finally feel herself again, engaged and open, showing her teeth more often. So, Laurie, who was it that gave you the intel on our studio again? Rufus wondered. My friend Jacqueline, she used to work with you some months ago. The interviewer raised his eyebrow. Oh, she was a freelance graphic designer. You hired her to make a logo I saw when entering through your main door, she explained. Right, Jacqueline, how could I forget her quirky demeanor and talented touch? Rufus slapped his forehead. Uh, yeah, she said you were looking for our models, so here I am. I spoke with Amanda, your secretary. She arranged this meeting. Who? Oh, Amanda, of course. She no longer works here. I had to let her go uh, two days ago for slander and defamation. Our office is an honest agency, you see. We don't tolerate lies that are aimed to deface us and uh, ruin our rep. Us, distributing illegal images and videos, please. Rufus rolled his eyes. Maybe she had her reasons? Laurie felt a nudge of unrest inside. Nonsense. That fool should have known better than stick her stinking curvy nose where it doesn't belong. I bet she was just jealous of the girls' looks we use for magazine covers and commercials, being eternally far from their level of beauty. Your level of beauty. But we're straying from the main reason to our rendezvous. You, Laurie, came here for uh, what exactly? What is your ultimate goal? To... To find a way to become an actress. I tried various auditions, yet they turned me down. I'm not giving up, however, but uh, I gotta start somewhere. Lori added a certainty to her tone. Perhaps some were not meant to be on screen. Maybe you lack what they seek, charisma, that uh, light, that mojo. Lori shifted in her seat, her cheeks blushing. Maybe it was a mistake to come here, seeking to fulfill silly dreams instead of focusing on real thing, like maybe studying in college. Seeing her hesitation, Rufus jumped up from his chair, reassuring her they can come to an agreement. But first, why not have some tea or coffee to melt the ice barrier formed after his harsh words? Laurie nodded, that anxiety nugget moving deep within her. She shoved it back into the darkness. Must get that contract. This is a prestigious studio with plenty of connections. Or so she heard. Rufus returned with a cup of coffee. It was quite sweet and dark with a specific aftertaste. Laurie made a face, trying it and burning her tongue. Rufus winked and gestured. Keep drinking, girl, putting his own mug on the desktop without a single sip. He stared at her. I think we can arrange something. You are definitely not lacking in the looks department. Why don't you say something into the camera? I would like to see how you appear on screen. I was just about to ask, was it uh, recording the whole time? I saw a red flash when I entered. Does that bother you? Our methods of seeking talent? We know what we're doing. He sounded upset. Oh, not at all. I just thought it was a bit strange. Laurie nodded, sipping her coffee.
We aim to capture our potential models in the most unusual situations. Our approach is unorthodox, yeah, but the reaction they exhibit reveals the true hidden gem. We shall start with your acting. Look into the camera and tell me about yourself once more, where you were yesterday and where you wish to see yourself tomorrow. Open up, butterfly! Rufus pressed the record button. Laurie did her best, trying to act natural, confronting the lenses and Rofus behind them. She smiled wide, selling herself to this modeling agent, hoping to make it, to break through. After she was done, Rofus applauded his bravos and kudos, his expression genuine. Congratulations, little hen, you were really convincing. You made me truly believe that you got what it takes to be our next face. As a mascot of our company, you'd appear on magazine covers, and I even have a few ideas for a commercial pitch. With us, next thing you know, you'd appear on Vogue. From there, your road to the magical world of cinema is open for conquest. Do you really think so? Laurie forgot everything. Oh, absolutely. All my concerns and doubts about you have evaporated without a trace. You're not a shy, pretty but dumb blonde like I thought at first. No, not at all. You just needed some uh, motivation. Alright then, let us go to the reception desk and I will have my new assistant conjure a contract for you, young lady. With his every word, Laurie felt excitement blossoming. She totally lost her head in the dreamy clouds, already seeing herself on podiums and conferences, surrounded with fans and glee her bank account exploding with seven-figure digits, easy-going lifestyle of parties and luxury. Rofus approached the door and opened it, inviting Laurie outside for the contract that would seal her fate. She went through the exit hearing his final phrase. He seems to speak to someone. By the phone, perhaps? I found quite a tasty eye candy here. Naive, too. Yeah, she would do just fine, I'm sure. Just love crushing them. Hey, Laurie! He called for her with a high, broken pitch. Huh? Laurie asked. How about a fist to your verdicts, girl? <laughs> he laughed, bludgeoning her. The corridor spun and the grey carpet suddenly met her face. Laurie barely sensed any pain. She didn't see his heavy, blunt fist coming, wrecking her like a truck. It took several long seconds until she closed her eyes, hearing the echoes of Rufus's voice, cackling and swearing obscenities at her. It's curtains down for you, Laurie. End of Act 1. The girl opened her eyes into nothingness, as if blinded. Or was it just a dark-lit room? She wouldn't know how a sight-deprived person would describe the absence of colors. She'd never been blinded before. Laurie tried to move, realizing she sat on a chair with her head on her chest, and she was all stiff. Adjusting, she could lift her face and try to get used to the black abyss, only to get flashed so suddenly and brightly she thought her eyes got fried. When she could finally see, Laurie found herself in a room with a single lamp rocking below the ceiling. The girl sat in front of a round table, completely untied, thus able to move freely, not that she could, due to rising nausea and headache. It's surprising she didn't fall over while unconscious. She wore a rather revealing maid outfit, though not as vulgar as it seemed at first glance. The unfortunate wannabe model wasn't alone. A man in a tidy suit, all strict and formal, with a covered face, handled a camera on a tripod to install it in the corner of the room. He ignored her weak questions, demands and pleas. Laurie tried to stand, yet couldn't. Her wounded head won't give back control. She was a wet noodle. Girl, you hit the jackpot of bad luck. Laurie's eyes were waterfalls of tears. No, she had to collect herself. They expect her to break mentally, but she would do quite the opposite. The girl exhaled deeply, shaking. Captured for a degenerate snuff film. A great job, Laurie. Meanwhile, the guy brought silverware and prepared the table for a feast. What were they planning? This silent attendant wouldn't peep a word. Watching him helped her focus. She had to stay put, sit and recover while she still could. 
Got to combat this headache, then catch the right moment to fight, tear and kick for freedom. These scumbags would pay for what they've done. Laura is not helpless. Once the guy was done, another maid with a covered head as well brought a large tray. She was dressed poorly, with blemishes all around her body. Seeing what uh, might happen uh, to her as well, Laura felt the ice shard of fear prick her. It took a colossal amount of willpower to hold a yell, but she managed, swallowing. When the silent maid put the tray on the table, she went out, only to return a moment later. She was pushing a wheelchair with some kind of a deformed person, an overgrown creature, loosely resembling a human, with large, crooked, athletic hands and tiny legs. Its dark eyes with bloody pupils gazed at Lori with hatred. She sensed that if this goblin could, he would tear her apart. The cameraman ordered the other maid to leave. He then spoke to Lori. Start feeding him. We film you. Be gentle. He's naughty. Do that and we let you go. He spoke with a low bass voice, so unlike Rofus. Go to hell. I'm not touching that thing. Lori. You would make things easier if you do what you're told. Feed him. Open the tray. Lori tried to get up, feeling better. Best play along for now and wait for the appropriate moment. She opened the tray's cover and saw the creature's meal. Some sort of a meat stew. She took a plate and filled it with the detestable cooking of bones, nails and teeth. Following the suit guy's instruction, she approached the vile goblin, leaned forth and gave him a spoonful. The freak's half-rotten teeth crunched and munched. He gagged on his portion, moving his feet. Laurie proceeded to feed this gullywog, and he bit her hand, wheezing and smiling at his own prank. Keep feeding him. Now pour some of that liquid into his mouth. Make sure he drinks it all. Good. We're almost done. Wipe his mouth with a napkin. Instructions snapped out of the man like whip lashes. Laurie staggered on purpose, grabbing a knife and uh, tucking it under her skirt, while her back was turned to the cameraman. He didn't notice it or couldn't care less, yet the ugly simpleton saw her and made a fuzz, kicking and throwing. The director slapped Laurie for disturbing the flow of filming, Yet it was a lazy slap, which only angered her. As he turned to face the deformed freak, he made his mistake. Laurie's knife aimed for the man's neck, yet she missed, hitting his shoulder. Her captive shuddered, but wasn't beaten. The blunt knife merely grazed him, and he turned to face the little fragile woman, throwing her on the table, his hands squeezing her throat. Guess we shall add improvisation to the film! He roared. Lori rattled, trying to catch her breath and release herself, struggling, yet she could do little in her assailant's embrace. Her hands danced on the tabletop, probing the wares for something to protect her. The key to her salvation jumped right into Lori's sweaty palm, and in an instant she drove a spoon into the cameraman's eye with a, a single swift stab, this time with perfect precision. The captor howled with pain, letting her go, and Laurie, high on adrenaline, kicked him in the groin, then used the tray as a weapon to pound his head. Breathing heavily, she shoved the bowling little goblin freak aside, flipping him over, and launched through the door, which wasn't locked, entering a large room with hordes of girls, just lying on mattresses, dressed in all kinds of outfits. Laurie found herself in a hall of kidnapped waitresses, nurses, teachers, schoolgirls, princesses, lifeguards and so on, all beaten to a pulp, some chained, others lying without any signs of life or bereft of reason. Think fast, girl, what can you do to escape this horrible den? Laurie looked around, hearing voices and loud steps from upstairs. The cameraman's friends, alarmed of the commotion, hurried for the rescue. Two large fellas rushed past a group of poor girls lying on the floor, among them was one in a bunny outfit, another in a cook's uniform, third a businesswoman and a maid between them. Laurie noticed how lifeless were the eyes of the businesswoman. She had a slightly curved, long nose. Amanda? Laurie didn't have much time, 
There was little she could do to help her officer's former assistant and the other girls. She had to make a run for it, take her chances, while the other two tended to her captor and that freak in the other room. Laurie stood, mustering her strengths, and slipped out towards the stairs. She took a great gamble, yet Lady Luck was on her side. First were corridors, then some boiler room, and through this hectic run, Laurie could escape via an unlocked window, climbing through and tearing her knees. The escaped model found herself in a dark alleyway on the other side of town, all shaking in the rainy night, more from their terrible experience rather than chilly weather. Intuition told her to walk some distance away, maybe a couple of blocks, then seek help. She tried to memorize every possible detail of this unfriendly neighborhood. The street name and number, the entrance to the horrid snuff den in the face of a laundromat, bus stops, other shops, buildings. Arms crossed, Laurie quickly paced away from the predator's nest, determined to expose the agency and everyone involved. Bystanders threw unpleasant glances at a dirty maid with scraped legs and leaking makeup. But she ignored everyone. As much as she is concerned, she is far from safe. Anyone could be an accomplice to her kidnappers. Got to move on, away from here. She walked for a distance until reaching a more crowded and uh, civil part of the city, feeling out of danger, blending in. Hey, I found our bird, trying to fly away. Nah, she didn't see me. It's time for her to come back. We have to make her a star. I hired her after all. Oh, and we have to talk about the security of our fine establishment once I come back. Rofus closed his phone, smiling at Lori from afar.